Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be pruning up my Vietnam style ficus microcarpa. This started out as a ginseng ficus from a grocery store. This tree used to have big ginseng roots that were about this long. I cut them all off, planted it as a cutting, and it regrew new roots. And then I carved the big bulbous roots to create a finer root structure. And I'm working on the branching now to create a miniature Vietnam style tree, the giant trees you see in Vietnam in the concrete pots. This tree is planted in a 3D printed pot. After the last pruning, the new branches came out with very tiny leaves on them. And as the tree has been gaining bigger, the leaf size has been going up and up. So I'm going to prune back to those smaller leaves and get more and more branching and I'll do some general overall shaping of the tree. I'm going to start with the main trunk line coming up the front of the tree. In the past, I've removed all the branches in this area so you can see the trunk that's hidden behind it. And I want to grow this trunk line coming out the front a little thicker and a little taller to be kind of the focal point of the tree. So I'm going to remove all this new growth that's coming off the trunk in these places. So there's that one, that one, and this one. Like that. So now you can see the trunk line. Eventually this trunk line here will blend in better with the main trunk here. At the moment it's got quite a bit of extreme taper. Next, I want to prune all this new growth back closer to the trunk line to make the tree a little more compact. So I'll prune off all these vigorous ends on the branches back to some smaller leaves closer to the trunk line. And I'll use directional pruning here. So I'm going to prune this branch here. I'm going to prune this lower branch here. I'm leaving the branches a little long at first until I get everything kind of pruned up and then I can slowly reduce the size of it. I can take this branch back further if I take the branch above it back further so it has light. So I'll just keep pruning away all the new growth, uh, shortening it using directional pruning and then I'll come in and look at the design and make all my final decisions on the branches. got the canopy nicely rounded now. This front one needs to be a little taller to kind of blend in, but it's, it's getting closer. I can maybe reduce the height, the overall tree height a bit here. I got the tree kind of profile pruned. Now I'm looking for branches that I can improve or ones that need to be removed. Um, here I have a pair of opposite branches. The center branch comes up and I have one to the left and one to the right. I want to remove one of those. I think it'll be this one. I've got one to the left here, one to the right. I'll keep them alternating by getting rid of that one. There's another one back here I can remove. Like that. A bit of a dead stump here I can take out. That. Now coming up that trunk line, I have one to the right here, and then I've got another one to the right, so I'll take that one out, and it's kind of on the inside of a curve. So I'm back to the left, and I have a leader here. So I think that's all good. I can... Uh, I'll leave that. I'm just going to prune it back a bit shorter, but it's fine the way it is. Now, I'm wondering about this branch, if I need it there. Again, it kind of crosses all the trunks behind, so I'm going to take it off. That's a new, new sucker that's growing in. This one here, 
I have like a major branch behind it and you can't see it for all these leaves here. I'm thinking I don't need something coming out the front. I don't think I do. I'm going to take that off. I think it's just covering up my better branch. Having branch density is good, but they all have to be in the right places, otherwise it just looks like a jumbled mess. Take this one back a bit further. This one now, what's this one doing? Again, that's a new branch, I think. I don't think I need it there. Got two coming off one spot, I'll take that one. This one's very straight down here. I'll reduce it a bit more. Take a stub off. There's another stub here. Take that off. Now here, I think this is a new shoot. I've got a branch above it. And I don't know if I need that one. I do have a low branch here, and there's no... Maybe I need that branch to counteract this low branch here, because this one has a branch here and a branch here, and this one also. So I'll keep that. This one needs to be shortened a bit. I'll just take the tip off. At least I'll get some new branching in that direction. All right, so, so new. I'll get some division at the tip. More branches, more choices for the future. There's one growing up here. Trying to see where it's coming from oh, right here. Yeah, I don't want that one. It's growing parallel with the main trunk. Take that one out. And this one also. Again, kind of cleaning that structure out. I've got a double branch in this area. Uh, I think it'll be... Do I want any of them? That is a question. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think... There's two branches here in the middle. They're new shoots. I don't think I want either of them. So they kind of grow in towards the tree, they cross the trunk lines in the back and obscure your view of them, so they, they're coming out. It opens up the middle of the tree a bit more. There's a new branch growing in there. Got the leaf off of it. I don't want it here. Do I want that one? No, I don't want that one. That one comes off too. Okay, just rotating it around, having a look here. This branch here. I think that'll grow out okay. There's a lot going on here. It's kind of nice having it fairly full at the back here. It looks good from the front. There's an old leaf I can take out here. Kind of got a double branch here, one above and one below. Don't think I need that lower one. Keep the more mature branch. Take this leaf out here. So on the inside here I can take out want that. This one's good. It's fanning out nicely. This one's quite good. This one's too long back here. I'm going to short it here. So 
go ahead and take the top off this branch, keeping my more horizontal branch in place. It opens up a bit of negative space here. You need negative space in these canopies, otherwise they just look like a, you know, a hedge. You need space in between them. A bit of relief. Now, here's the height of my that front branch coming out, and I want these a little shorter if I can get them shorter. So I'm looking to see if I can do that, and I think I can. I can take the top off this one. I can take the tip off this one. The tip off here. And this won't shorten it by much, but just a little bit. Uh, here, I can take the top off there. There's an old leaf I can take out there. And then the top here. Uh, yeah, I can take it back. This one. Yeah. And yeah, that's about all I can do there. I could take this one back. Uh, I'll take the tip off this one. If that gets this you know, a little more in line with the height of the canopy. And I think, I think that concludes the pruning. Here's a look at what I took off today. So, you know, compared to what's on the tree, I would say it's about a third to getting close to a half I took off. So there's the tree from kind of above. Looking at it from the front. Rotate it around so you can see it from all angles. Yeah, it's looking to be quite an old looking mature tree. I rather like it. Not too many videos ago, I pruned up my large forest. Pinching all the new tips back, shaping it all, removing the bottom needles. It was a lot of work and it needs pruning once again. Here is a look at the large forest. So it's looking nice and green in the sun here. You can see the bottom shoots haven't extended much, but as I go up the tree, they get a little longer and up in the apex, quite long. So these ones need pinching back, the ones on the tops of the trees, the ones yeah, a little further down need a little less pinching and as I get down to the bottom ones most of them don't need any pinching at all they just there's the odd one but generally I can leave those alone so yeah so that work will have to be coming up soon I don't think it'll take me all that long it's just a matter of pinching this time today is succulent Sunday so the next tree I work on will be a succulent the next work I'll do is on my Portulacaria afroforest. These trees are styled to look like the giant African baobab trees. Today I'm going to give them some more pruning. The last time I pruned these trees, I left some of the shoots long to kind of get a little more vigor in the branches, to thicken them up. Today I'm going to prune them all off, getting a uh, kind of a shallow um, spherical or umbrella shaped canopy. All right, here I go. So my canopy will be in here somewhere about this height. I will prune this one off here. I can leave this one grow a little longer because it's, uh, it's not, you know, interfering with the height. Not yet anyway. The one on the front, I'll prune off here. There's a branch in the inside I'm going to take off. I don't want it there. It's just a stub here. I don't want a branch growing in that direction. So I'll take that off. And I can clean up this stub here too. The remains of this long branch. There, like that. Now out here I have some quite high branches. I'll take this one off here. This one, I 
think I think this is too high if I prune it there. Yes. So I'll prune it back one more segment to there. This one I'll prune off to here and here. These back ones to here and here. So that's got the canopy shape fairly good. I could prune this one back a bit more. Maybe the one back here, take a segment off that. Segment off this one. Yeah, I think that's looking quite nice. Now I have some new growth in here coming off this stump. I don't think I want it, so I'm going to take it out. Again, it would just use up all my negative space and instead of seeing the trunk in the back it would just look like a bush instead of a tree. Okay so that's got the main tree pruned up. There's a little bit of work to do on some of the surrounding trees, not a lot, like this one has a long shoot coming out here so I'll prune that back uh, to here. This one I can take the tip off here there's a, a new sucker coming up from the base of this tree. I don't want it to you know, be a multi-trunk tree, so I'm going to take that off. And the same happened with the tree over here. You can see there's another shoot coming up from the base. So I'll take that off also. This tree in the end, I could do a little work on it. Kind of prune it back just a bit. This one too, back a bit. Like that. The rest of the trees are looking quite nice. They look quite miniature. You know, this looks like a miniature version of this and a miniature version of this and then a miniature version of the largest tree. That's what you want. You want it to look like these trees disappear in the distance. Okay, I think it's pruned up. Let's have a look. So here is what I took off today. So, you know, the Blue Jay Bonsai Carnage Cam isn't really showing much. It's a very light pruning. And here's the trees. I think they're looking quite nice. So Sophie is working on making a custom pot for this to get it out of this mica pot and into a clay pot. It'll be a little larger than this pot, so it should give the landscape a little more room. And I'm hoping to replace these stones with my nice detailed ones. I'll show you those. Out here in my stone collection are all the detailed stones. So you can see how much texture they have. They're really, really nice stones. And I have a lot of variety of sizes. If I can't get what I want, you can always cut these up. If you get a metal grinding wheel, you can come in and you can take slices off them. So that's a possibility. If I can't find the right size rock, I can always kind of grind a bigger rock down. Because these bigger rocks, you know, you might use one in a penjing, sort of a cliff or something, but if you were to use more than one of these bigger rocks in a landscape, it would get heavy like real real fast so yeah it might be better just to take the best part of the rock off you know like in this case maybe just shave off the top and get rid of all this stuff on the bottom which is still okay but it's not as interesting as the top that was exposed to the weather yeah so that's the stones I'll be using I think they'll look really really good they'll look even more miniature than the ones that are in the planting now. I'm standing back having a look at the landscape now. So I think two things with this planting is one is the scarring I think was really successful on the trunks. It really gives a nice texture, a baobab look to the uh, Portulacaria aphras. I think too the trunk thickness is coming on. 
Uh, the thickness of this trunk here is looking more baobab-like uh, due to the, you know, growing it out, drastic pruning it back, growing it out again, drastic pruning it back. Repeating that cycle gets you pretty good trunks. I think it's getting there. It's starting to look like a baobab forest, I think. Yeah, I'll keep improving it, but uh, I think it's getting there. It's looking better and better each time I prune it. Over here with the mini bonsai, I want to show you a new one. And this is a golem jade here that I started from a leaf cutting. So let me zoom in and show you that. So I just stuck a leaf in the pot here. You can see the leaf is the rotted one over there. It's kind of, yeah, disappearing. And then this is the new golem jade that's growing up. So if you're growing mini bonsai, you know, succulents are a good way to go. You can start them from leaf cuttings in little pots. They root and they grow and they're quite, quite fun to develop into the future. Uh, there's a lot in here that need pruning work. This one, this was another jade here that was started from a leaf cutting. My Arizona cypress needs work. So I think I'll do that on a separate video, uh, pruning up my mini bonsai. That should be a lot of fun. When I last pruned my desert rose Socotra Island planting, I pruned my desert rose for the first time and I kept the cuttings off of it. And I did plant them today. They've been drying out ever since, just in the greenhouse here. So over here are my desert rose cuttings. So you can see some of the leaves have kind of gone brown. So I thought, oh, I better get them planted before they shrivel up and just die. So I'm hoping that they root in here. It would be really nice. We'll find out in the future. Over here, I've got, I think it's a Haworthia. And you can see in the center of it, there is a flower. It looks like a flower coming up. There's a close-up shot of it. Yeah, so that's kind of exciting. I'll see that. On my aloe over here, let's go back to the Socotra Island here. Uh, the one, it had a flower shooting up from my aloe and it shot up and you can see it there. Uh, the one seed fell off, but the other is still attached here. Okay, it just came off of my hand. Oh, and I just dropped it. Where did I drop it? I did find that aloe seed. So I'm going to plant my very first aloe from a seed. So I'll place the seed in the soil here. Bury it not too deep, like that. So the tip of the seed is just sticking up. Maybe I'll bury just a little more, there. I'll give it a watering and I'll see if I can grow an aloe from a seed. Okay, here I go with the water. So that, that seed has been in the dry air, the heat in the dry air for a long, long time. So once it gets moisture around it, it should it should react fairly quickly and germinate. Okay, there it is. It is planted. I'll put it beside the other aloe and see if it grows. I've got one more tree to prune up today and that's that Russian olive that Derek grew from seeds. Last time I defoliated the tree and pruned it back because it was sucking up so much water, I couldn't keep up with the watering. I was having to water it like four or five times a day. And I'm getting to that point once again. All the new growth has come in now. So today I'm going to prune it back. I'm not going to defoliate it. I'm just going to prune these new shoots back to like the first pair of leaves. So I'm looking for leaves that fan outwards. So back to here. Oh, I notice there's a bit of white fly on it. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Here's another one I can prune to an outward facing leaf. Be careful not to disturb my white fly. Oh, there it goes. Ah, 
Um, this one I'm going to come back to here. This one to here. the white fly just flew back. So I'll get rid of these branches outside and then I'll spray this with the soap and water. All right, here I go with the soap and water and it's important to spray the underside of the leaves. That's where they tend to accumulate. Oh, I just saw two fly away. Three. Hopefully they got covered with soap and they're in the process of dying. Okay, that's thoroughly sprayed down. I'll let that sit for a while, and then I'll rinse it all off. It just suddenly got dark out, and I hear thunder. There may be a storm coming in tonight. Hard to say. All right, it's time to rinse off the Russian olive now, which is not an olive, but... That's what they call it, so that's what I'll call it. That's its common name. Okay, that can go back on the bench now. Not sure where the front will be on this tree, probably. I'm not sure. Maybe something that shows a bit of the slant or, you know, could be more upright. It's too early to decide on the front for this tree. I'm going to develop it into, you know, a little bit bigger. I'll have to pick a style for it too. I'll have to research these Russian olives and see how they grow in nature. Okay, back on the bench it goes. Just a few minutes ago I said it was suddenly getting dark outside. Well, now it's even getting darker outside. If you look at the horizon there, there's rain clouds coming. It's definitely going to rain. Today I had Eric and Emma over. You might remember them. We did a series of videos together. I think it was just last year. Maybe it was two years ago. I can't remember. And they're going on vacation, so they brought over a lot of their trees, so I found a spot in the greenhouse here for them. And I'll look after them while they're gone on vacation. So they have a lot of Portulacaria aphras, single trees, there's a forest back there. Their tiger bark ficus from the workshop, the Tropical Expressions workshop. There's a Fukian tea, there's a parrot's beak down here. Ficus benjamina, a sarissa, and these are coleus? Is that how you say it? I may be butchering the name, but they're, a, they're not supposed to be a bonsai, but Eric's bonsaiing them, so there's a red one here. And this, I think he said, is year three for these plants. They're supposed to be an annual, and but I guess if you overwinter them, they... They survive the winter and they look really, really nice. It looks like an old oak tree. And can you hear that thunder? Oh my goodness, it's going to pour. Wow, is it ever getting dark out? I better check the bench for, for succulents. I hear the first raindrops. Just starting. It is raining outside. Very, very hard. Oh my goodness. Wow. Looks like a monsoon out here. 
the rain is coming down now. Mother Nature is taking care of watering all my outdoor trees. And that's all today for this Succulent Sunday. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.